two, <laughs> one. one. <laughs> Boo can you guess what we're gonna be doing today? So you guys were behind me about a chest movement video. Chest workout you guys wanted, but I thought, mm, there's tons of those mother around. So today instead, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be taking some of the top five chest movements you probably aren't using, but should be, to help build you from the upper tit to the lower nipple. <laughs> First one we're going to be looking at is cable chest flies. You're going to be thinking, Lex, I do cable chest flies all the time. But do you do them like this? So we're going to be using a narrow cable stack, but this works on any cable system. But instead of going from the top or the middle, we're going to be going from the bottom. You're going to be doing this with an underhand grip. And we're going to be looking at a little bit of a different movement here. You're going to be thinking, oh, I've done this one before, Lex, I've done it before. Yes, you might have done, but have you been doing it right? Because this is a bit of a staggered movement. The idea is to not come up in one smooth motion, but to do more of a two-part one, which goes against everything we normally say, I know, but it's still under a controlled mechanism. So what we're going to be looking to do is come from the sides, up to the middle in the belly button, and then come straight up to shoulder level, keeping that underhand grip throughout. The reason we're going to do this is because it's going to bring in that chest, all the way to the contraction point in the center and then you're going to squeeze and then as you lift up what that's going to do is help activate the upper part of the chest plus it's going to make you maintain shoulder control because here what we're able to do is we're able to really lock those scapula in place keep the shoulders in place and keep them down rather than when we're doing cables like this and people tend to roll over and do this old school rich piano kind of <laughs> r.i.p so underhand grip we're going to walk out so that now we've got weight on the cables Feet hip width apart, soft knees, glutes engaged, ribs d -d 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 down. Anything you do, try and keep those ribs down. That's gonna stop you overextending and arching. Now we're gonna engage our scapula. From here, we're gonna come into the center, squeeze, and then lift straight up, squeezing the chest, back down and out. So you can see, even though it is a two-part movement, it's smooth and it's quite a natural motion. So what you should be feeling, chest squeeze, and again, and you should feel that squeeze and that concentration, move up the chest as you come all the way up to that collarbone height, shoulder height. Ooh. This is a really good one as well. If you've got shoulder impingements, shoulder pains, elbow pains, it's gonna remove all those problems. It's gonna give you a really nice controlled movement that's gonna make you have to work hard to keep that rib cage down, shoulders in place, but still gonna give you all of that chest contraction and contraction Control, mind to muscle, all equals growth. Everyone's favorite, a dumbbell chest press movement. We're gonna be doing a 15 rep movement through five rep breakdowns. So it's gonna be five, 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 continuous movement. And this is with dumbbells on the bench. Everyone thinks flat bench press, that does your chest one way, incline does it another. Put the bench one up from flat. For here, one, click, just that. This is still basically a flat bench press, but with this ever so slight elevation here, what it's going to allow you to do is set those shoulders a little bit more easily and take some of the stress off the shoulders themselves. Also remember throughout all of these movements, we are not overstretching at any point. When you feel those big deep stretches on chest, everyone's like, get the deep stretch, work the muscle. All those deep stretches that you're feeling, that's the tendons, that's the connective points of the muscle to the bone. You don't want to be stretching and fucking that area up. So think more about contractions and control, so no overstretching. This movement is going to be a three-part chest movement. We're going to be using 20 kilos here, so it's not a heavy movement, but as you get better, that weight will probably go up a little. We're going to start with an underhand press. We're then going to move into a hammer grip press, then back to a standard chest press. The reason I love this exercise is because it's hitting so many different angles, but it's also forcing you to keep shoulder control throughout and body control. So we're looking to drive through the heels. We're going to squeeze at the glutes. We're going to keep that scapula engaged and shoulders back. What you don't want is that overextension at the top where you let the shoulders pop. So first movement, we're gonna kick them back safely into position. So from here, I'm gonna plant my feet, making sure they're even, squeeze my glutes, shoulders are back, underhand grip. I'm gonna drive up, elbows kinda of tight on this one, keeping that dumbbell head nice and close to the body and driving up through the chest, extending through to the elbows, but not locking out, making sure the shoulders don't pop. Five reps this way. Switch hammer grip, I'm gonna tilt the dumbbell heads down towards the chest. I'm gonna keep them here throughout. Five reps, keeping those elbows nice and tight, not letting the shoulders pop, not letting the elbows roll out. Five of those, four, five, get to the top, keeping the shoulders down, roll out. And from here, the inner dumbbell head tilts in, and then we press 
as we would a bench press. So we're not gonna flare the elbows massively wide, we're gonna come down just below the shoulders, stop here. So what I'm talking about, no overstretching, none of this. Ah, we stop here, as low as you can go with the bar, keeping the dumbbell heads tilted in, and then we drive, heels, glutes, bang. And we're looking for that symmetrical press from side to side, bring the dumbbells to over the chest. Not over the face, not over the ribs, over the chest. Up to the top, squeeze with the chest, and don't lock out the elbows. Five reps, three, four, five. Control them down, sit up, whoo. 15 reps, five, 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 is one set. Smash five of those bad boys and tell me you don't feel awesome. Floor presses are exactly what they sound. You're gonna be doing a chest press from the floor. The great thing about this is it has a start-stop position with your elbows and upper arm touching the floor. You're gonna explode through the standard portion of a chest press. You're gonna control that, squeeze at the top, but then you're gonna fight that negative and do a really controlled return. You're gonna be paying attention to the way your arms touch the floor. And by that I mean, do they touch at the same time or is the one touching before the other? If they do not touch at the same time, naturally, it means you've probably got an impingement. It's something you need to work on and this is a great exercise for starting to work on that. Because what it's gonna do is help you focus on returning both arms at the same speed at the same time. If you've had an impingement for a long time, that incorrect way of returning, with one being quicker or staggered compared to the other, that's gonna feel normal, so this is gonna feel a bit weird, but you really need to address those situations as soon as you notice them. Set up on your floor press. You've gotta be a bit careful here because you are gonna be moving a little bit more weight to get it into position. So one for me, I like to get them up onto my thighs. And then what I'm gonna do is lie back and roll them out. Lie back and roll out. From here, you can see now I'm completely relaxed, able to talk to you for quite some time, and I'm controlling the dumbbells. Again, I wanna tilt those heads in. Now I wanna plant my feet, make sure that I'm doing as I would on a normal bench press, driving through the heels, squeezing the glutes. From here, I'm gonna press up, control and squeeze, bang, boom, hold. Don't touch at the top. This is a rest point. We wanna keep them separate. That goes for everything on chest. Now, the return. I'm gonna fight this, one, two, Three, making sure both touch at the same time. Perfect, and then explode back up. Again, we're looking for eight to 12 rep range on these. If you wanna go a little bit heavier, you can go for that six to 10, boom. But what we're focusing on, explode out, control down, and balance. Both arms touching at the same time, boosh. This is gonna help fix imbalances, plus grow that chest, plus improve the explosive part of your bench press. Boom. Next up, we're gonna be taking a little look at that upper chest focus. It's gonna be an incline press. Lex, I do incline presses all the time. I know, but I got a little bit of a transition for you here, which if you've got bad shoulders or shoulders are grinding, maybe you've just beasted a lot of incline, but you wanna do it anyway, but you want a variation, I've got one for you. And it's gonna be a neutral style hammer grip press, but there's a few tweaks you need to do to get this one right. Incline of the bench. Most people will put it to around about there. Now, this is completely fine, but for me, somebody who's notoriously got shoulders that tend to scream under doing a lot of weight or perpetually being peed down, I tend to find that putting it one above where you'd normally have it is okay if, when you sit down, you tabletop your chest. And by that, I mean, you try and make your chest the flat part of a bench. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna have the lower back arch just like you would on a bench press. You're gonna squeeze your glutes and plant your feet. So rather than being sat up like this, which is obviously gonna bring the shoulders in more, we're tabletop in the chest, arching the lower back, engaging the core, squeezing the glutes and driving through the heels. Complicated enough? It'll feel perfect when you get it right. So set up for this, you're gonna kick up off the knees. We're gonna do that dumbbell tilt again. So I'm gonna bring that head that's closest to my chest down towards the chest. From this, I'm gonna to look to extend up, but due to the position of my body, I'm gonna find it really hard to fully extend the arms, which we don't want all the time anyway, but this is gonna feel a little stunted in comparison. So kick it up. Like I said, table top the chest, shoulders back, glutes squeeze, lower back arched, driving through the heels. Angle of the dumbbells, I'm gonna drive up, and stop here. What you're gonna to wanna to try and feel to do is to extend even higher, but this then starts to pop the shoulders forward and you lose that control. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up to a comfortable standard neutral position, which is about here. So you can see how bent the arms are and then back down controlled. Don't let it touch the chest. It can just maybe glance it and then we're gonna stop and control back up to the top. So what we're not doing is bouncing. We're gonna stop and start. Drive up, 
squeezing the chest at the top, squeeze and focusing on fighting that negative and keeping those shoulders in check. Again, whatever weight you choose is gonna dictate your rep range. So you can go light on this, but you can also go heavy. And what you'll find, whew, other than the pump, is that it completely de-stresses the shoulders and gives you a really nice inner and upper chest focus. Boom, boom. So you've had four movements there that have covered your volume, power, impingement, and a bit of strength building as well. So now I thought it'd be nice to finish with a body weight exercise or so something that you can maybe do anywhere where you're able to do something called a dip. No, no legs. I know how to do a dip. Do you or are you being a dipshit? Because there's a good little trick here that I don't see many people doing in the gym. And if you do do it, congratulations. But there's a couple of other tricks as well on top of the little trick that'll help you get this to be the perfect exercise. Beginning with the start position. If you want to hit triceps on this, what you're going to need to do is stay very, very upright. But we want chest, so we're going to want to lean forward. But we don't want that lean forward to start bringing the load onto the shoulders. How do we counterbalance this? Easy. Up to the top. What we're going to do, we're going to lean forward and then we're going to bring our feet forward. So rather than the feet being back here, where most people do it, we're going to bring them underneath ourselves and put our feet under our chest. Now we're creating a linear position from feet to chest where that weight's going to be loaded. But we're also able to keep those shoulders back because the body weight isn't tilting forward through the shoulders anymore. Trust me, give it a go. If there's any twisting, rotating or moving like that, again, you're going to be looking at some side being impinged or not being held correctly. Let's set up one more time. Up, shoulders engaged, tilt forward, bring the feet forward. Elbows allowed to flare ever so slightly as you come down, but we're not coming out to the sides. Come down, look at where I stop. Here, not here, here. You can see my chest activating. And as you drive up, Boom, squeeze at the top, chest, 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 not rounding the shoulders. Again, we should be able to rep nice and clean with these. Boom, control the negative. Squeeze on the positive. You're gonna get an awesome chest pump. If you're feeling it in your shoulders, you're either going too deep or not keeping them in play by maintaining that scapular position. So focus, have a play around, and don't be looking for like 30 reps on this. Too many people look at dips and do, oh, I'm gonna do 30 reps. No, no, no. Try and keep it so that you're doing that 8 to 12 or high volume 10 to 16. Try and make yourself fail within those ranges. Slow it down, control the negative, explode, do the positive. Once you get to a point where you definitely are easily able to do 20 reps like that, then you can simply add a little bit of weight using a weight belt or put in a dumbbell between your feet. So there you have it. They are some of my favorite movements for chest that you might or might not have been using. And either way, even if you were using them, hopefully I've given you a couple of little hints, tips and tricks to be able to make them feel even better. If you'd like to see some more videos like this, let me know on what subject matter, which body parts you want to see, what are the ones that you want to see the most. Let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell and select to be notified for all uploads because the you of Tube will no longer do it for you. It'll only show you the ones where monkeys throw poo at a zebra. I don't think we're doing any of those, are we, Jay? No, not, today. not quite yet. Maybe next week, yeah. Not quite yet. But what we did do is we did an epic Game of Thrones throne build video here at Barbell using only gym equipment. Link for that is in the description if you haven't seen it already. Thanks for watching. I've been Lex. And we'll see you in the next video. Boom, baby. Lately, I've been doing shit different. Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen. Had to make a move, had to make a little distance. A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision. Fuck that, tell them about.